Hello and welcome to the Fulhamish Quick Take, live from Philadelphia. Myself, Sammy James here with George Cooper. Hello. Hello, mate. You all right? Good. We've just seen uh, Fulham beat Brentford by three goals to two here at the Lincoln Financial Fields. And uh, George, a nice little morale-boosting win after a, uh, a difficult week off the pitch. Yeah, it was a really good game, actually. Normally going into pre-season friendlies is a feeling of a bit apathy. Nobody really cares, but given everything that's happened, I've got the feeling that the boys really came out and gave it some. And we saw some brilliant goals. Every single one of our goals was fantastic. Harry Wilson came out of the blocks. He got man of the match here, and rightly so. He's got, he looked really, really, really sharp. Um, absolute ping to get us off the mark. Uh, also, um, Bobby Depadova's Reed's goal was just sublime, both outside of the box. Vinicius looking sharp as well uh, to top off our three. Um, it was entertaining and it, it had a bit of edge to it as well, which I don't think we, a lot of us, were expecting. Um, Harry Wilson got barged off the ball and then seemed to uh, sort of, you know, when you take a bit of a uh, take a bit of a hit and then it, he had a bee in his bonnet, uh, pardon the pun, and then seemed to uh, lay into the opposition bench. But it was really good, man. And like towards the last five minutes, we're like, I want to see this out. Even a bit of time wasting in the corner from our boys, but. Overall, really good game, important to get the win, and um, yeah, it's, been a, it's been, a, been a mega day, isn't it? Yeah, it's been really fun here. The atmosphere is really good. Um, there's a lot of noise in the background because the second game, Newcastle Villa, is about to kick off in about 45 minutes' time, and uh, some of the fans now are kind of getting a few refreshments and then will probably be settling into that game um, later. Um, we started off with Rodrigo Muniz up front, who uh, didn't do uh, an awful lot. Um, not sure he's massively made a claim for that striker role or being involved if and when Mitro goes. Yeah, and I mean, there have been a few reports. We've not really seen it from where we've been sat, but Mitro, uh, Cam Ramsey on our group chat said he's like a spectre looming over the looming over the, uh, the squad's soul king. Obviously, we expect to see Vinicius out. It was nice to see Muniz. Like, I, I was, you know, I was surprised, raised a few eyebrows, but um, nice to see him get a run out. He's just not match fit, is he? Obviously, he didn't get an awful lot of time when he was at Middlesbrough. So I'm guessing that Marco's just trying to use this to get him some game time, build up a bit of confidence, hopefully get a goal or two. But yeah, he looked really, really off the pace. You could, there was a noticeable difference with Vinicius coming on at half time, uh, just in our output. We looked a lot more potent. Um, yeah, I think it's just minutes really that he needs. But it will come, hopefully. Um, the biggest disappointment of the day by far. I'd have happily lost this match 5-0 if it didn't mean Jao Polina, uh getting an injury. It looks like it's a separated shoulder, which I I'm no doctor. I'd never massively heard of that before. I'd heard of a dislocated shoulder. I'd never heard of a separated shoulder. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that is uh, a big blow. But reports, if they're to be believed, it... it it isn't the biggest recovery time for a separated shoulder, but again, we'll have to wait and see a little bit. Yeah, I think like us, along with the rest of the Fulham fan base, as soon as we heard it, it was a separated shoulder, Googling how long is the recovery time. And the range was hilariously broad. It was like between two and 12 weeks. So a fortnight or three months, anywhere in between there, it's anyone's guess. But yeah, if, we, if you'd have gone in, saying it's like not what we want to see, if you'd have gone into this game and be like, what is the worst possible outcome? I think Jao Pellini getting a long-term injury would be pretty high. I mean, we can only like pray that. I mean, you've got to remember this guy's got the best medical staff. He's got physios. He's obviously incredibly physically fit. So we're hoping that the recovery time will be on the shorter end of that scale. But yeah, not what we need at all. However, if we're thinking about a silver lining, at least maybe that will keep West Ham at arm's length or shoulders length, should we say? Hey, very, very, very good. Um, second half, um, I, it was it was entertaining. I, I thought Vinny's goal was was taken um, brilliantly. He looked, I actually thought he, he was looking pretty good. Um, Willian came on as well and just uh, oozed class like he always does. Yeah, he got an amazing reception from the, uh, from the Philly faithful uh, downstairs. And he looked just class just didn't lose the ball he had an absolute zinger that very very narrowly missed the um missed the post from about 25 yards out um yeah it's great to see him he looks sharp as always and yeah we think that i mean obviously with the with the news that he's staying it was a massive boost and you could feel the love from the crowd and um he looked quite i would say he looked quite stern he wasn't I wouldn't say he looked like he was loving it he wasn't laughing it up he wasn't showboating he looked right. quite serious i don't know whether that's an indication of uh the stuff that's going on off the field but you know we, we, we were talking um with drew about 
Willian signed. I mean, Drew said he believes that Willian doesn't sign unless Marco, he's, Marco's given his assurances that he's you know committed. And obviously the news coming out beforehand that Marco's rejected the offer from Saudi. But again, it's like quite cryptic and that he hasn't signed the contract. He, he, he said something like, um, I see out my contracts, which is quite sort of ominous and cryptic. How do you feel about that? I, I thought it was a bit strange. I mean, I, I thought his press conference yesterday was, was really odd as well, where he's kind of saying like, I, I've shown that I'm committed to the club. I've said I've always said I'm committed to the club, and then they're like, "But do you not think that like not signing a contract is like unsettling for fans?" And he's just going like, well, "I've said I'm committed." Like it, it's almost like a uh, belligerent um, person in an argument. Just like, look, I've, 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 I've said I'll do it. All right, I've, I've said I'll stay. Stop asking me. Stop bothering me with this thing. So it is. It is weird. Like we know he has a contract offer on the table, but. He said no to massive money now twice. Like, he isn't going anywhere. It's just a little bit like you want that certainty as a fan. Yeah, and also there's the argument that it might be a, um, a turn off for players looking to join us if they're like, well, you haven't got a long-term commitment from the manager. I don't know. It's all a bit weird. It's almost like he's been saying, like, what's none of your business? <laughs> keep, <laughs> yeah. keep, keep, keep your nose out. Stop asking me. Yeah, like, why, why are you all so interested? It's none of your business. I'm like, well, we want to know who our manager's going to be for the long term. I don't know. And obviously, like, it's we're talking about he's out of contract at the end of next year, so he could re-sign that contract. If he's not going to do it before the start of the season, it could be at any point that season if he does do it. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we're all getting a bit, like, anxious about nothing ultimately, but I don't know. It would just be nice to see that, see that news alert, wouldn't yeah. it? Uh, and we could see Mitro on the bench today, um, as we, we couldn't really see him up close, but, I mean, it's happening, isn't it? It just feels now like... <sighs> As much as I don't want it to happen, and I'm still in this kind of denial stage about Mitro going to Saudi Arabia, I am getting to the point of just, just, just go. If you really want to go that badly, and you're going to kick up this much of a stink, and it's going to overshadow our preparations this much, let's just. I am getting to the kind of let's just get on with it now. It's really tough to say, but I totally agree with you, mate. Like, just also, I'm just so disappointed by the like the ways seems to have gone about it, like. I get from his perspective, he's probably thinking, well, I've given you uh, five, six amazing seasons. You know, I've given you my all. Like, let me have this, like, cash in. I mean, first of all, it's disappointment, disappointing to think that he doesn't. I mean, it, it, I don't want to say that he doesn't appreciate the love that he's got from Fulham because I'm not, you know, I'm projecting there massively, but it's given off that impression. Um, it's souring it all a little bit, isn't it, at the yeah. end? And we'll we'll forget this in time. When we look back at Mitro in 10 years' time, this will be a footnote. But right now, it, it is just souring it slightly. And I, we all love him so much. And, and it's just ending a little bit, like, horribly. I guess that's why it hurts so much, because of how much we love him and how much of a talisman he is for us. But, I, yeah, I agree. Like, at this stage, you know, we had Fabrizio tweeting out there that it's almost done cash in the 50 million, try and get as, as close a replacement. I know Jimenez is uh, close to signing, isn't yeah. he? Um, and just, let's just move on. Let's just, yeah. let's just, before it gets any, before but it, it gets doesn't, any, yeah, before it gets any uh, more upsetting. It doesn't say. have to end like this though. And you see the way that Zaha's leaving Palace and stuff, and he's done this brilliant like post today, thanking the Palace fans and, you know, writing why he's doing this move to, to Turkey. I, I, I don't think you have to do this to get your move, Mitro. Like, you, you can do it in a slightly nicer way, but it's details, and he just wants his, he just wants his big money move, doesn't he? Yeah, and ultimately, right. So he's, he was upset that we're rejecting mil offers of 25 million. If Saudis are going to come in and pay 50 million anyway, then, like, everyone's got what they want. Like, he's got this big money move. We've got the money that we feel we deserve for a player of his caliber. Like, let's not forget, like, how important he is to our squad as well. It's like put us in a real shitty situation. So, like, it's just, I don't feel like it's, like, not like not his place to throw that, this much of a stink up. Like, we've, everyone eventually got what they wanted. And, like, surely he would prefer that the club get the money that we're getting. Like, I don't know, this whole situation. I kind of feel like, you know, when you, like, have a bad dream and you wake up and you're like, oh, yeah. thank God, like, it was all, yeah, it's fine. It was just a dream. I'm, I'm, it's how I'm feeling about this situation. I just want it to all just to, like, yeah. go away. But... 
I won't I won't believe it until I see him in that kit. Like I, I still part of me is thinking he's he's playing it to get a new contract. You know, he just wants a pay rise. Like nah, nah, this doesn't work out. But today was when it really kind of sunk in. Like oh shit, like this is this is happening. Do you feel the same? Like yeah, it's it's. I, I think now you see him not playing and stuff like that and. He he really wants this move, and there's too many noise, there's too many there's too many rumors and stuff like that. So, yeah, I just I just think it's a matter of time. Let's do, do, do you feel like Jimenez is a like a replacement? Does he just come in like a like for like in? I I don't think that Jimenez is the Mitrovic replacement. I think he is the. I, I think it's bad news for Carlos Vinicius is, is my main thing. And, and it was nice to see Vinny get a goal today to maybe remind Marco, look, you're bringing in Jimenez, but I can bag a few goals too. I mean, I'm not going to lie. As much as I think Raul Jimenez was a great player, he went downhill after that injury. He never was the same. I think he's a smart number two option, a really right. smart at 5 million. But like, if we lose Mitro and replace him with Raul Jimenez, that screams screams relegation I'm sorry and I know there's more players to a team than just the striker but come on if if someone told you that back in May that we're going to lose Mitro and we're going to get Raul Jimenez as his replacement if that's the case you'd be like absolutely no way no I mean God knows who we're going to get we've obviously spoken about a few potential replacements in the podcast who'd be who'd be your who'd be your choosing I mean like ultimately I feel like there are strikers in Europe that I would be, you know, like missing out here if I said I want them. I still think Balogun seems like a very like obvious option, but he is the obvious option for a reason because like he did well in France. There's a lot of hype about him and there's always the, the American connections as well. So like Balogun would be cool, but like I also could imagine that there's plenty of players in Europe. I know that um, Jack talked about the uh, the striker from Feyenoord, whose name I've completely forgotten, but he was a big uh, player for them last season and stuff. He'd be a good option. He'd be a direct fit. There's um, Taremi from Porto as well that's been mentioned. Again, was it Lisbon or Porto? It's, it's definitely Porto. But, yeah, it, it's, it seems like... I, I'm sure there, that Tony and stuff will have a big list of strikers and... Hopefully we can find someone, but yeah, we, we all need to move on. On a happier note, just uh, to end today's quick day, a word about the last couple of days that we've had. The tailgate that we did today with the Philly Fulham fans was just incredible. One of the most affirming things we've done out here. It's been awesome to see the football. It's been awesome to be here in the stadium, but one of my highlights of the trip um, so far was being part of that tailgate. And it's it felt like British and American culture, like mixing, obviously... British football, but done in such an American, brilliant way, and everyone is so friendly. Yeah, it's. I will never forget these days. Like it's just been phenomenal, and just the the positive sort of uh, feeling around the tailgate. Like everyone's just like so happy because you've got to remember people have come from all over America to these events, right? There's a lot of Fulham fans in America in the states, but there people have come from like Oregon, people have come from Maine, people have come from Florida to watch this. And like everyone has kind of said, I don't have like mates that I can talk to Fulham about at all. Like like I, I just you know, I'm the only Fulham fan in my town. There might be one out one other or something. So it's just like for them it was like, "Oh my god, I've like I'm here with like like-minded people, like fellow Fulham fans. This is amazing." And it was just like the most heartwarming, just brilliant. Um, you know, they had a grill going on, they had burgers, hot dogs, like coolers full of beer that everyone's just tucking into. I could get on board with it, how yeah. getting culture. We were saying beforehand, I think that the weather might make it slightly difficult. Obviously, it's like glorious sunshine here. I can't imagine like in a sort of January, three o'clock kickoff, like outside in Bishop's Park, everyone freezing their yeah nuts off. But um, yeah, it's just been an amazing day and... I'm really looking forward to um, to DC. I'm sad, sad you're not coming out with me. Yeah, I'm sad that this is my only like match that I'm coming to, but it's been so worth coming and it's been awesome to cover it. And cherry on top, a win today okay. over 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 the bees. Yeah. Keep them quiet a little bit. Obviously, I'd I'd happily have again. I said it earlier. I'd happily lose five 0 today and win the uh, the game the first game at the cottage against yeah. them, but. You know, it's a nice little morale booster. Yeah, Keeps guys, them in their place. I just say to the tailgate as well, it was so funny. Because like, we had loads of people. And, like a good, really, really solid turnout with the Fulham tailgate. And um, the Brentford tailgate was like kind of just opposite. <laughs> and like, 
measly numbers if we're being honest yeah. like compared to ours it was like and then there were some Benford fans who like obviously like hadn't read the room very well who came over and started like telling everyone to fuck off basically <laughs> it was like god like you guys are so obsessed with us even like yeah. even in the uh, even in the sort of like Philadelphia like everyone's getting on summer friendly still still a bit of bite but I have to say they do have they did have a very good surprise us they had a really good turnout within the stadium yeah but um, yeah that little tailgate exchange just made me laugh a little bit yeah it was <laughs> right well thank you very much for watching the uh, the quick take here pretty awesome backdrop to do it at the uh, the home of the Eagles here in uh, Philadelphia George thank you thank you very much cheers Sammy and we'll see you on the quick take soon